Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel, West Coast Wild Child. Do you see this view? Yay, that's Hong Kong, baby! Um, so I arrived in Hong Kong yesterday and today I have been stuck basically sitting with the applica visa application for China the whole day. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited to be here. I'm excited for the food, the drinks and everything. So to see that, stay tuned. Ah yes, but first I had to come to Hong Kong from uh, the Philippines. And I think they actually put me in first class because I was in the first row, which has never happened before, ever. And this is what it looked like when I arrived at my hostel in Hong Kong. Uh, the view was absolutely stunning and yeah i mean look at this i'm in the big city yeah i have an interview in two days where i have to go to the visa china visa application center here in hong kong yeah, filled in the application and it took a really really long time because I also had to book the flight out of China, the train into China, my accommodation while I'm staying there, and uh, yes, yay, but hey, at least we have kind of a view, can you see that? Hey, 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 no, that's not the screen, that is actually Hong Kong, that'd be nice. Now I think I'm gonna go out and eat some more dumplings because honestly I have had since I arrived yesterday two meals so far and I have to say that I mean the food here is so so good there is a reason why Chinese food is known everywhere and why there are so many Chinese restaurants because it's just uh, it is so so good and there is milk tea everywhere I'm literally drowning in milk tea I'm so happy like oh the food, the food is a 10 out of 10. Food is a 10 out of 10, the tea is 10 out of 10. Honestly, if I came here just for eating, I would already be pleased. Like, So tomorrow I'm gonna do some touristy stuff. I guess I'm gonna run around a bit if you can see all the trees down there. Uh, it's like a park and apparently there is a lake with flamingos there. According to one who works here at the hostel, so I'm gonna go down and see that. Stay tuned. So this is what the street looked like below. It was very, very busy. I can say there is a lot of people in Hong Kong. A lot, a lot. Um, and yeah, the weather took a turn for the worse, sadly. Um, but that did not stop me from going to a market. Uh, the first one I ever went to was the ladies market, which is very good if you're looking for souvenirs, I would say. like. Small trinkets, um, bags of all kinds, all fake of course, um, clothes, just basically everything you ever want to take home with you. I wanted to buy so many things but um, yeah, I just have a backpack so I had to stop myself. Uh, what I could not resist though was uh, one of these, um, what do you even call these, like, yeah, these ones, absolutely fabulous, works great when it's hot outside, and also I bought this little keychain that they told me it's jade, but I don't think it is. Actually, I did not know that there are beaches in Hong Kong, but there is, there is actually a few of them. Um, so I went here with a French guy that I met in the hostel and he knew that Hong Kong had beaches uh, Which was lucky for me. So we took a bus and We went there and it was really nice. The water was warm. I will say though definitely try to not um, get any of this water like in your mouth while you're swimming or something because um, the water is really dirty 
I will say there is plastics and there is just uh, lots of stuff in the water so be a bit careful about that uh, but the views are beautiful just sitting on the bus and looking down it was absolutely marvelous um, actually Hong Kong is not at all what I expected like it's way more green and hilly um, I just didn't know that it looks like that and I'm very pleasantly surprised it looks really really good So this is on my way back from the visa application center and yeah um the full story will uh, i will tell you shortly but before that there is something that always helps dumplings oh my god when i tell you i just had the worst experience the second worst experience since I started traveling so far. Oh my god, Jesus, I'm sitting here in a park and sweating and just trying to get my bearings back. Um, so I applied for the Chinese visa today. Um, it took me four hours at the application center, one meltdown. So yeah, it was absolutely horrific. Um, the worst bloody visa you can ever apply to. I thought that the Indian visa was bad, but wait until you try to get something to China, like, oh my... It was ridiculous, it was terrible, oh my god. So, you have to first fill out an, an online form that is nine pages long, where they want to know literally everything about you, your name, your parents' names, um, your education, your work, um, every all the hotels where you're gonna stay um, how you are gonna get into China if it's like if it's a train uh, or a flight whatever they want to know how you're gonna leave China uh, so you need a ticket how you get in and out of the country you need to show everywhere you're gonna stay while you are in China and yeah, so the problem was that on my application, my name, my middle name, I apparently had it in the wrong, in the wrong column, which meant that I had to um, fill out this nine four story form again. Um, luckily, it was online, so I had um, saved the basic information, but I needed to change that and. Then I needed to print it again, which was a bloody nightmare because um, my hotmail did not work. I tried to verify it on the computer, but it was just fucking around. It did not work, um, which was very stressful and super, super annoying. I almost threw the bloody computer into the wall because I was so annoyed. Um, so then I had to go out into the city and literally find somewhere I could print my bloody new application uh, which took me an hour at least I ended up in I use Google Maps um, and Google mapped me to a place where it said you could print stuff and I ended up in a basement in a house yeah um, long story short um, I said outside a closed door in the basement of this shady building um, on a stack of papers and cried because I was like okay this is not gonna work like I'm giving up I'm giving up I was like okay fuck it I'm not going to China I'm gonna go to South Korea immediately like this is apparently just not meant to happen for me and while I sat there crying on this stack of papers in front of the closed door uh, the owner of this if you can even call it a shop uh, he came with some food so he was just on lunch leave I guess 
uh, sees me sitting there on his papers crying and yeah he didn't care too much about that but I asked him like oh, can I print some papers <laughs> and he was like yeah sure um, so they said on the embassy that they could print the papers for me as well and it would cost me a hundred dollars to print nine pages and I was was like no absolutely not i'm not paying you hundred bloody dollars for printing my application again uh no so that's why i left and went to this other place it was really hard to find by the way people don't speak well english here so um it was kind of hard to make them understand where i wanted to go but it was a bit hard to like ask for the way uh finally i found a woman who was willing to tell me that i had to go down down to the basement um, so then I went back to the application center and also it's not enough that you need to have this uh, application filled out you also need to make an online appointment because if you just show up and you don't have a time book they're not gonna help you out um, and my time was at 10 and by the time I had printed it again it was like 1, 1 p.m. And I was like, okay, if I come back now and they're gonna be like, oh no, you have to book a time tomorrow. Like I have booked my train into China in four days. So I don't have time to wait another day um, to be able to even apply for it. Yeah, I printed those nine pages and it cost me $10 instead of a hundred. And then went back and I asked in the reception, like, do I have to wait in line again? Because I waited in line. To, for my appointment for an hour and he was like oh no you can just go to the counter where you were before so I did that and the guy there told me oh you have to wait, wait until uh, so I knew this was at 1 p.m. and he was like oh yeah you have to wait until 3 p.m. until I can help you and I said no bloody way I've just ran my ass off just to print this bloody thing again like you're gonna help me now um, so he referred me to another desk with a young girl that was uh, willing to help me and yeah, I applied for the visa, filled everything out, yeah, I guess now we're gonna see. I paid for the express visa, so I'm gonna go there in two days on Friday and get it. It cost 940 uh, Hong Kong dollars for the express one, which you need to pay in cash or if you have a Hong Kong um, card, bank card, which you probably don't, I'm gonna assume. So yeah, you cannot pay with Visa or MasterCard or anything like that if you apply for the Visa uh, at the application center, so bring cash. So yeah, we're gonna see. After this nightmare, four hours and crying in a random basement later, um, I mean, I still don't know if the Visa is approved or not. But at this point, I'm like, if it's not approved, I'm not gonna fight it. I'm just gonna skip China. Like, I can't be bothered to, like, this has already been so stressful. <laughs> um, so now, nah. then if it doesn't go through, then clearly I'm not meant to go there right now. Um, and in that case, I'm gonna go to South Korea um, immediately. That is my plan. Oh God, I'm sweating so hot here I think it's like 32 degrees super hot but this is really really nice this is just um, basically outside my hostel like when I'm up in the hostel I'm on the 15th floor I can actually look down on this park I need a place to relax I had some dumplings for lunch uh, the money that I saved on not paying a hundred dollars for printing my bloody application again uh, I invested very well in dumplings and yeah, I guess we will see what happens next. I'm just so tired and happy that this is over. Yeah, I'm gonna try to download a VPN as well for China because you cannot use WhatsApp, Instagram, YouTube, nothing of that uh, works there because it's banned. Um, so I'm gonna have two different VPNs because I really need to have like my WhatsApp and stuff. Yeah, like even Google is banned. You can, you can't do anything there. I'm actually a bit um, scared on how it's gonna work out everything. But yeah, <laughs> 
traveling is fun except for when it's not. Uh, applying for a Chinese visa is definitely the most, um, the worst experience I made so far except for the street dogs in Vietnam. That is still a strong number one, but I would say this is second. This is definitely second. Oh my god. Um, yeah, so let's see if the visa supply is granted or not. There really was a lake with a lot of birds in it. Um, yeah, so there were a lot of flamingos and a few of them also had some babies. And they were so cute, they were like grey and fluffy and seemed to really enjoy their life. Look at them, how cute they are! <laughs> also, if you take um, this way, China to Hong Kong City, um, then you will come to a bridge and this bridge leads over to... First of all, there's a lot of high buildings and uh, also it will actually lead you to the harbor where you can have a great view over the over the harbor, over the buildings. You can go here at uh, during the day, during the night. Um, I did both, and I would say I felt very safe here. Like even when I was running around in the park at night, um, which I usually definitely avoid, um, I just felt very safe doing it here. Obviously, always. Um, be careful and always listen to uh, your surroundings and look around you but I feel like Hong Kong is a very safe place like I was around a lot at night and I never felt unsafe anywhere Actually, there were not a lot of people around at all here. I don't know if it was because it was a certain time of the day or if people just usually don't go here. Like, I don't know, it just didn't really feel like that much of a public space, but that was great uh, because nobody's in the way for filming and you can take great pictures without anybody else being in the background. Um, I really loved it here. I think this is definitely one of my favorite places in Hong Kong I went to. Yeah, really nice. Recommend. I have not slept properly for five days because I've been so stressed. But now I'm alone in this room, so I hope I can get some nice sleep in tonight because tomorrow I have to check out and move down one floor for another three nights. Yay! So it's raining today and in an hour or so I will go to the visa application center and see if my Chinese visa is approved or not. Um, I really hope it is after the pain it was to apply for it, but uh, there's no guarantees so I guess we'll see uh, in a moment. Also a good investment if you are going to Hong Kong is to invest in one of these. It's the octopus card. You can use it for traveling on the trains, the buses, you can pay with it in restaurants. Uh, the min minimum wage is 200 Hong Kong dollars and you can charge it with cash in the 7-Eleven and stuff. Um, very easy to use, definitely recommend if you're staying in Hong Kong for a few days. And I think if you don't use all the cash, you can actually get it back in one of the... Uh, it looks like an ATM, but you can put it inside and if you still have money on it you can actually take it out if you're leaving Hong Kong 
So yeah, it's really nice. Chinese visa got through. Yeah, we're going to China in two days. <laughs> Instead of taking the subway back, I took the boat back from the uh, visa application center. And on the way, I actually I went to the Avenue of Stars, which is a basically a promenade along the river, where. You can look at the buildings, you can see some really cool uh, boats, um, some statues of known people and yeah, there is also a lot a lot of people around so be prepared for that. This is the smallest room I have seen so far. Like, what? Nah, I like the other room better. Definitely. I'm trying to think about all the things I need to fix now that my Chinese visa is uh, approved. Um, so I've just been sitting, I've been googling about SIM cards and VPNs because you can basically don't use any apps in China at all because they're all banned. And also I don't know if I will have access to like my bank apps and stuff like that. So I try to uh, see to it that I have enough money on all my accounts so I can take out cash. Uh, which is what I usually try to do. Um, so yeah, there is a lot to think about. Um, I feel like the time in Hong Kong has been 50% looking at Hong Kong and 50% um, trying to plan for China because it is a lot to think about, especially uh, with none of your apps probably working there. But I have downloaded Nordic VPN uh, work. I heard it's a very good VPN, so yeah, hopefully it will work. So on one of my last days in Hong Kong, I went out to another market. Um, actually, I don't remember which market this was. Um, I found some squid, which was delicious, a bit spicy, I would say. And, and yeah, I would say this night market had basically what the markets here usually have. They have a lot of clothes, uh, fake designer, um, and a lot of like schnickschnack that is just fun to collect I would say. I found some spring rolls, not dumplings this time, no. We can eat different things. Um, I went to the harbor at night, it was really really nice and yeah there is just a lot to do in Hong Kong. Um, doesn't matter if it is during the day or during the night, um, there is always stuff happening. Also if you don't want to look like an idiot uh, like me and you are looking for the cutlery then it's usually in a little drawer in the in the table. It is the same in China and in South Korea, so <laughs> that's a pretty good thing to know. Oh, it is the day before China tomorrow. Hey, <laughs> Ooh, the aircon. Hey, <laughs> sorry. Tomorrow I'm taking the train to Shanghai. Um, I will actually try to, um, I will go to a market today that um, the owner of this place recommended to me where you can uh, buy a SIM card for China because I will arrive in Shanghai by a train, I will not fly there. Um, so I'm a bit worried how I am supposed to get a SIM card. I have installed a VPN yesterday, uh, Nord v uh, Nordic VPN. And I hope it will take me through the great firewall of China. <laughs> See what I did there? Um, so yeah, I really hope I can use Google Maps. Um, 
because without Google Maps, I mean, I'm a millennial, how am I supposed to find my way if I don't have Google Maps? Um, so yeah, I am a bit nervous to be honest, but I'm sure it's gonna work out fine. I'm sure it's gonna work out fine. And even so, even say VPN doesn't work, everything is meh. Um, I'm gonna be in China for two weeks. Um, it's not the world. And then I'm going to South Korea. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully it will be all right. <laughs> Understanding the metro in Hong Kong is super, super easy. They even have this map that lights up, like the lights will actually show you at which station you are. And this is the market I went to to get a Chinese SIM card. They had so much fun stuff here. Like, oh my God, I can't believe how I walked away. Uh, without buying any of these but yeah somehow I managed I guess I was just really stressed for China um, so yeah really big market they had literally anything you can imagine and it was super hot um, they had even some peculiar looking vegetables and I believe this is tea actually I'm not sure but I think it's tea um, someone correct me if they know better. And Shibuya Crossing. Who? Look at that. Hong Kong does it just, just the same. <laughs> guys hope you enjoyed the video and yes next adventure is china so stay tuned for that subscribe if you want to see more nonsense and yeah see you in the next one bye